Um, I read the script on a, at an airport actually on the way back to New York and I was just so taken with the story and um, having read the script I looked on the internet and found Bernard's book and was really inspired by his experience and what he'd done and the fact that it had come together in such a great coherent story was um, it was a no-brainer really. Um, I've never actually played a living person before but it was one of the things that I always uh, said that I wanted to do and, and it didn't necessarily have to be a famous person but it wanted it, I wanted to play someone that was um, still alive actually so that I could talk to them and then try and portray them. Um, I've done it since Urban and the Shed Crew on another project and it's actually very it's actually quite difficult because in the moment when you meet the real person and the moment I sat down with Bernard as an actor, I felt incredibly self-conscious, and I know as a person, he felt very self-conscious because um, we're kind of both studying each other. He's studying me and thinking, what am I going to do with his his life story? And I'm looking at him thinking, am I going to give your life story the truth and the earnestness that it needs? So, um, but it was a really enjoyable experience. And, you know, we, we tell stories to entertain an audience, but at the same time, there is a message there. So um, hopefully we've done both. I've never really worked with children or animals before this, and this, to the same scale. But actually, I was really excited to work with all of these kids, the actors that played them. And actually, we got to meet some of the some of the real show crew, which was, I mean, obviously they're all grown up now. But seeing that input was was really valuable. But you know, the most thrilling experience I had was to work with Fraser Kelly, who inspired me every day that we went to work. Such a smart kid. Um, with such insight and empathy, that was the that was the thing that really surprised me about Fraser. Is, is some children at that age don't necessarily understand empathy, but he really had it. And, and I really set out to have have some fun with a role because I tend to play quite um, dreary, dark characters. And, and this is a, a, a terrible world that we're depicting. But there was such love between the two characters, and, and they appeared to um, help each other survive dire straits. And I, I really wanted to find that in, in the relationship between myself and, and, uh, and Urban, played by Fraser Kelly. So I went to work every day with the, the sole ambition of, of making him smile and laugh. Anna Friel brought nothing but trouble to this film. Um, no, Anna, I, I mean, I couldn't think of a better person to play Greta. I mean, and she, again, is a very conscientious actor. She goes very, very deep. I think she brings something to that character, something, there's something fractured in the character, but Anna brings a sense of warmth to her so that you really, really care about her. And in, in the wrong hands, that character would have been not, not likable. Um, my connection with the city of Leeds really is that my father and his two sisters grew up in, in Leeds, um, I guess, through the 40s and 50s. Um, my, my sister's family, my dad's sister's family, my aunt, they're all still here. I've got a huge family here. Um, and my dad, I, I don't think they were necessarily um, in the same dire straits as, as the street kids that we talk about in this story, but they certainly didn't, didn't have an easy life. So I felt a, a real connection to the city. And uh, one of my references actually is my cousin's um, husband, who is a policeman. He um, has a great knowledge of all of the places that we shot in, unfortunately, because they're fairly deprived areas. So they are infamous in, in, in their reputation. So. Um, I had a lot of time with him to talk about the kinds of experiences that he had on the beat. I think um, the situation for, for homeless kids and, and kids who aren't very fortunate in the UK today is it's always difficult and it's always a challenge because as our lives become more comfortable we're sort of shielded from it so we don't enter those areas of the city so that we don't see it so much. It's not the focus of media because it's not, it's not attractive to look at so it tends to get swept under the carpet which is why um, Personally, I'm an ambassador for um, a charity which looks after children's mental health, cyberbullying, and now Action for Children, who um, who are working with this film. And I think it's really important the work that they do because they they provide all kinds of different counselling, uh, shelters, the, the simplest form of of, uh, of help, anything that they can think of. And really, that's what um, Bernard Hare was was understanding is that it's more than just money. It's actually care and uh, and time and he spent so much time and care with these with these kids and and i think they're doing okay now but it, the, the, there's a big there's a lot more work to do of course and there always will be i hope that the film um finds an audience i, I think it's i think fraser will certainly be um 
one of the key factors in that of finding that audience. I think there will be a lot of young people that re will relate to his performance and the world. Um, I hope that it brings some attention to the the plight of these of these street kids. I hope that Bernard is proud of the film, and I hope that he sells a few more copies of his book. Um, yeah, and I hope that Handed a Brady and Titus Ogilvy work is is seen by a wide audience. Action for Children are supporting our movie Urban and the Shed Crew um, to help children like Urban who are in dire straits on the streets of Britain today. I hope this film raises awareness and helps their cause.